I've been watching Wimbledon recently and look how fast they serve. The thing that impresses me more is this. I think we've just seen one of the greatest returns of all time. While I was researching the video, I was trying to represent how fast that ball is coming at the player. And I couldn't work it out, but then I saw this Top Gear clip that summed it up perfectly. It's so quick, it can destroy your entire face. I'm Jack, I'm a doctor in the UK, and I want to work out how these tennis players have the superhuman ability to return all of those serves. Now, this has led me down a rabbit hole of looking at how the software and hardware of our brain actually works, how we go from conscious to subconscious processing, and when we try and take control of those movements again, we can end up doing this. violation racket abuse warning what? mr Pear. Why? it was broken it was broken already so let's get into this and i hope you enjoy the video to understand how it's possible to return those rapid serves we need to go back to the learning process and understand how that movement is actually processed within the brain i think we should tell her that we've never played tennis in this early process our teachers give us a blueprint of how we can do that movement. So they'll show us how we stand, how we hold the racket, how we swing the racket. And that involves so much conscious processing for us to understand that movement. I need to show you a diagram. It's so much easier to just see it if I draw it. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly run through a few images that show you exactly where these movements happen within your brain when you're consciously aware of them. So your motor cortex is just here. And that's what's really communicating with your muscles lower down to tell them how to move. Now, your cerebellum is another key part that's involved. And that's involved in refining those movements to make them as precise as possible. And you can imagine with those tennis serves in the future, that refinement and that precision of movement is how you become a Djokovic rather than just a random guy who plays on a Sunday. The final structure in the brain involved here is the hippocampus and that stores all the memories and allows us to go back and keep iterating on that process to refine our movements and to become the best. The way I like to think about this is early on, we're building the software program and that involves us practicing all of those movements and each time we're refining that program as we go. But then obviously these players have been playing for absolutely years and they've practiced so much that that software has been hardwired into their brain. So it goes from so many different neural processes being involved to refining that process all the way down to one hardwired pathway that they just know. That backhand, that slice, they know exactly how to do that movement and they don't even have to think about it. So they've hardwired that into their brain so it's completely automatic. As you hardwire that movement into your brain, it drops below the level of conscious processing what does that mean? It means that as you try and consciously control that movement, it actually leads to this. Oh, he's done too much with it. And it's all become a bit too much for Djokovic to handle. You must have seen tennis players doing this, and I just can't help but find it absolutely hilarious. <laughs> But what is actually happening here? What they're doing is they're taking this automated process that they've refined over years and years and years, and they're trying to consciously involve themselves in that. And actually, when you do that, often it can lead to the movement being less effective. In the analogy of the software and hardware, as you try and get consciously involved, you basically corrupt the hard drive. Now, it can be the most frustrating bit of the game, but if you allow that hardware to automate all of those movements like you've practiced, it allows you to focus on the strategy, just like Andy Murray did in 2013. How much do you remember of that last point? I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened, it was, I, I don't know how long that last game was, but I don't know, I, I, I can't even remember. I'm sorry, I was, I was 
realised how, how well I was concentrating. He won Wimbledon and he doesn't even remember the last games and those last moments of actually how he won it. The reason that happened is because he dropped into flow state. Flow is often described as a state of kind of effortless effort. It is a, a, a game and a sport that, that constantly challenges you on every level. So you have to think, but at the same time, you cannot overthink. Right. You have to find that fine line where everything flows automatically. When I was reading through all the literature and it was saying that they shouldn't focus on those movements, my question was, what should they focus on then? And the answer to that was that to focus on the goal in front of them, by allowing those automated pathways to do their best, what it frees up is Andy Murray to analyze Djokovic and to strategize against what he's analyzed. So that means that he can build a pathway and completely focus on the task in front of him completely ignoring everything around him. Now, once he knows what that strategy is, he can execute it and run all of those automated programs that he's practiced for so long. Tennis players are able to return those ridiculously fast serves thanks to the circuits within the brain. Those hardwired circuits that have been trained over years and years and refined allow them to move like that movement is just a reflex to them. And it frees up the brain resources for them to analyze and strategize against them and then run those automated programs. And what I've really learned from this is once you've built those automated processes, it's easy to overthink it. And if Andy Murray, Djokovic or Alcaraz start to overthink things, they'll actually play a lot worse. You have to allow those automated processes, the autonomy to do what they do best. I'm going to be applying that to every skill I learn to build up that software to then hardwire it into my brain. And then when it comes to those critical moments, not to overthink it, but to trust the process and to trust that those pathways I've built over all of that time will be enough to get me through. I really hope that you can do the same and that you've learned something from this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you've learned and subscribe if you enjoy healthcare related content that is easily digestible and fun and hopefully that you can take something away from to apply to your everyday life. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you very soon.